Welcome to The Health Cast. I'm your host, Marley Smith, and joining me today is Dr. Alison Baxter. She is a South African pediatrician here to tell us a little bit more about a subject that really does affect all parents, teething, and when to blame teething. So Dr. Alison Baxter, welcome to The Health Cast. Thank you, Marley. Dr. Baxter, I would like to start today's episode by giving you the floor and asking you to start telling us a little bit more about what it is you do as a general pediatrician at Bedford Gardens Hospital. Thank you. Yes, so I've been at Bedford Gardens um, Hospital since 1997. A nice working environment. When I started working at Bedford Gardens, my oldest son was six months old and uh, even as a pediatrician, I think being a first-time mom, it's quite a, a scary um, thing to go through. Um, and, you know, the babies can't tell you what, what's wrong. They don't come with a manual. So certainly, you know, my experience as being a parent, I think, has, has helped me to, to empathize with, with my, my patients. So at Bedford Gardens, I do mainly general pediatrics. We do have a neonatal ICU, but it's not a very big unit. But yes, just seeing parent, new parents, second time parents, sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's not. But even all these years later, I still thoroughly enjoy what, what I'm doing there. Then the question I like to ask all doctors, I know a lot of doctors also say that they didn't choose the field, but the field chose them. Would you mind telling us what inspired you to pursue a career in, in pediatrics? So I have always enjoyed working with children. And during my medical studies, uh, the first experience and my first block of working in a pediatric ward, and I just, I just felt that this was it. I, you know, there, there wasn't, even with going through different specialities, there weren't any others that I felt would, would be more appealing or more appropriate to me. Then Dr. Baxter, jumping into our topic for conversation today, when we spoke in our initial call, I remember us speaking about teething. Most parents go, oh, my kid has a fever. It's definitely teething or they're not sleeping. It's, it's got to be teething. Would yeah. you mind telling us what exactly teething is? And when do most babies start this teething process? Okay. So, yeah. so teething is a natural process. You know, babies are born without teeth. And usually it can start, some symptoms start early. So between three and four months where the teeth, they're not going to cut through, but they start moving in the gums. So a lot of parents will notice that they they. Their babies are drooling. They're biting on everything. They, you know, not really miserable, but there seems to be this irritation of the gums. And they all, you know, when they come in for a, a checkup and they say, you know, my baby's very small, but it seems like the, the baby is teething already. Um, and this is a normal phase where between three and four months, the, the teeth do start moving in the gums. But they don't usually actually erupt through the gums until a bit later. The, the usual timing is from about six months. Some babies, it might start a little bit earlier and some babies a little bit later. But around six months, that's when the, the, the teeth will start erupting. And it is a normal, it's not a, an illness, it's not a disease. It's a normal process that all babies have to, to go through. Yes, it can cause some issues for the, the babies and the parents, but it's, it's a normal process. And also, every baby is unique. Some babies sit with all their teeth a lot quicker than others. Dr. Baxter, you did touch on some of the common signs and symptoms that parents should look out for when this process starts. Would you mind elaborating a little bit more on that for us? Okay, so yes, just what you mentioned about all children being different. So I remember when, you know, when, when I was studying and they first mentioned teething or as a, a gauge, an idea of, of working out how old a child was, they would say, you know, children start teething at six months and every month they'll get another tooth. So if you see a baby with four teeth, they're six, 10 months old. But unfortunately, it, it doesn't always work like that. 
And, and some babies might start teething at, at six months and get a new tooth every, every month. But there's some babies that they might teeth a lot faster. So instead of one tooth coming at a time, two teeth or three teeth will come. And then there are also other babies where the parents are concerned because they're almost a year old and they don't have any teeth yet. But all of these are normal variants. You know, not every child will, okay, you're six months, your tooth's going to come. And, and also in terms of how the, the teething process affects them, some babies, you don't even realize that they're teething. And then all of a sudden, the, the parents will notice, oh, there's a tooth or they two teeth. Whereas other children, the parents might notice that the, the gums are swollen. They putting their hands in their mouths. They want to bite on anything that comes into contact. And some babies, the, the sleep pattern might be affected. Some babies might have a loss of appetite. So, you know, and it might, it might not be the same for all teeth. So, you know, some parents will say, you know, but the first four teeth came out without any problems. Why are they causing problems now? And, and even the, the, there is a, a normal pattern of teething, but not all babies will follow that pattern. So some babies might not get the front teeth and then the side teeth come and they look like little vampires, but it's just a variation of, of normal. Then Dr. Baxter, one of the most common things we hear is that fe fever goes hand in hand with teething, or most parents think that fever and teething go together. Is that true? So a lot of parents, or often it's not the parents, but the family and friends of the parents, okay. if the child is miserable, if the child has a, has a fever and they're at that age, they'll say, oh, it must be teething. And yes, they might, so children might be a little bit irritable, but the important thing regarding fever and teething is that fever, teething shouldn't be the first thing that you say, a child has a fever, it must be because of teething. And, and certainly if we look at how high the fever is, so if it's a low grade fever, so that would be 37 and a half to below 38 then yes, possibly it could be associated with, with teething. But certainly in those children where you have a fever over 38, even if the child, you can see that the child is teething and you know the, the gums are swollen, but that fever over 38 should not be, you know, that's not teething. Even if you can't see anything else, we need that, that fever over 38 is telling us that there's something going on and um, not just teething. So I think that's the important thing is that, you know, and often, often parents will come and they'll say, my child's hot or my child's got a fever, but they don't actually measure the fever. You do get other parents who will measure the fever every single day, even if the child isn't sick. But yeah, you know, if you, if they are concerned about a fever and teething, it is important to, to document how high the fever is. And if it's a low-grade fever that's there maybe for a few hours and then goes away and then a few days later might be there. So, we, you know, we're talking about 37 and a half, 37.7. Yes, possibly that could be related to, to, to the teething process. But a child that has a fever of 38 and a half, 39, and it's there consistently, that we should not blame teething. They, we need to, to investigate and, and look for another cause of the fever. Then Dr. Baxter, still touching on some signs that parents can be on the lookout for, can they expect changes in, in their little one's nappies as well? So there can be changes. Most babies will have looser stools. But there again, it, there's, it's important also to differentiate between a teething nappy and a diarrhea or gastro. So yes, the stools might be a little bit looser, but they're not normally as frequent as you would get with a, a gastroenteritis where it's more of an infective cause. They often do have a, a typical sort of acidic smell, but usually sort of three, maybe four times a day, not looking at six, seven, eight, nine, ten times a day, which would be more to be expected with a, an infection. So like a, a gastroenteritis. 
I have had a few patients or parents where they've said that their children actually become constipated when they're teething. Mm. So, yeah, that's just to show how, you know, not, not all babies are, are the same. No, definitely not. Dr. Baxter, then teething can obviously also affect appetite in little ones. How can parents yes. ensure that their babies continue receiving enough nutrition? I know when, when I've, well, we can't really compare it to us as adults, but I mean, having a toothache, you're not going to eat as you much don't. as you normally would. So, yes, the, you know, the, the, Definitely when the gums are irritating babies, they, they usually will carry on and drink. The, the milk feeds would still be, be adequate, but it's very common for, and unfortunately it's the, the babies that tend to be more fussy eaters. So the ones that the parents are worried about what they're eating, those are the ones that when, when the gums are irritated, they're even less likely to, to want to eat the solids. It will pass, but uh, you know, that, that is a, a big concern of parents. So the, the, the way to try and get over that is to offer the food that are more soothing to the gums. So smooth, cold, you know, even in, in children where they, they, usually will eat a variety of products, they, they might not feel like that variety, but maybe something like yogurt, that they would be, be happy to, to, to have a little bit of yogurt, even if the gums are worrying them. Most parents are very eager to alleviate these symptoms in their little ones. Dr. Baxter, as a pediatrician, what are some of the safe and effective methods that parents can use to help soothe a teething baby? So... Because the gums are irritated, what, what often works best is actually just rubbing the gums. So with a clean finger, you know, it just where you, you see where the, the, the baby's hands are, are going and just, or you might be able to see where the, the gums are swollen and just gently rub the gums. And that does provide some relief to, to the babies. Obviously, you not, can't do that for, for the whole day. But if they are particularly uh, uncomfortable, then, then that could help. There, there are also teething toys or teething rings, which help so the baby can actually bite on that and that can relieve the, the, the irritation of the gums. The ones that are firm but not too hard would be better. You don't want to damage the, the gums. And ones that you can put in the fridge, so not frozen, but just a little bit of, of the cold of the, the teething ring also provides some, some soothing, some relief to, to the babies. Teething necklaces, not really recommended. You know, I, I can't see how beads around your neck are going to do anything for your teeth. And, and they do also come with, with risks. So the beads around the neck can be associated with strangulation. If the beads get come off the necklace, there could be choking. There can be damage to, to the, to the gums. So although a lot of parents do feel that they make a difference and they have said that, that, it, you know, it, it definitely their, their children are, or babies are a lot happier when they're wearing the necklaces, that, that's really not not widely recommended. And then moving on to the, the teething gels and teething powders. Yes, they do sometimes work. Um, most of them com, com, uh, contain a, a significant amount of, of alcohol and some also the benzocaine with the, the local anesthetic. And the problem with the teething gels and powders is that even if they do provide relief, it's quite short-lived. So there's then the temptation for the parents to use it more frequently than they should be, which will then increase the risk of, of side effects of, of these agents. So my recommendation would be, yes, if the child is really miserable. So we haven't mentioned, we, we haven't spoken about it yet, but I think the, the, the most common complaint of parents in regards to teething is that their children are not sleeping. 
So, yes. because that's, that's it, you know, especially if a mom or dad has to go to work the next day and they're not sleeping because their child is miserable and feeding. It, it's a significant, it has a significant impact on the family. So in terms of, you know, if, if that, if the child is really miserable at night, is not sleeping, then the use of an oral uh, medication such as uh, paracetamol, Panado, Calpol, yes, that is safe to, to use. It uh, relieves the pain. You do still need to be careful, you know, not to give it, not to overdo it. So, I, you know, I wouldn't say to parents give it every single night, but if the child is particularly fussy, if they aren't able to sleep, then then it would be appropriate to give a, a, a dose of oral medication just to, to try and, and help them. Just for the sake of our listeners as well, when should parents consider reaching out to a healthcare professional? Are there any red flags or certain signs and symptoms they should be on the lookout for? So usually with teething, the babies will have a night, a few nights where they, they're uncomfortable, they're not sleeping. It's important to try and keep in the same routine, so not to add extra milk bottles because then you're just, you're creating a bad habit. But if you, and and usually after a few nights, they will revert to their normal routine. So if if a, a baby is really not sleeping well, and this is is carrying on for, for a week, two weeks, there might not be anything else going on, but it's better to check. So, you know, there, there might be something else. And all this, all this time we, we saying it's, they're not sleeping well. They're not eating well because they're teething, but and there is an underlying problem or maybe an infection, maybe an ear infection, maybe something else that needs to be treated. And then the nighttime niggles and the sleep, irritability and poor sleeping and poor appetite. If we, if there's an infection that needs to be treated, then they'll, they'll, they will return to normal. The same if there's a significant fever, then that should not, you know, remember that's not related to, fee- to, to teething. That also needs to, to be investigated. So, yes, I think, you know, the, the teething, it is a natural process. Babies do get over it. Some babies take longer than others, but Certainly, if you know if if they're not returning to normal after a few days, then and especially if the now most babies that loss of appetite will be there for a few days, but then they'll pick up and they'll start eating again. But if you're concerned that your baby is really not eating, and there's a there's a, a concern that there there might be weight loss, then that would be a, an indication to rather uh, seek medical help rather than just trying to get through it by yourself. Then Dr. Baxter, as a parent of, you have four grown children yourself. Yeah. How would your personal experience influence the advice you would give to parents? So certainly uh, with my four children, they were all different in terms of their teething experience. And so, yeah. <laughs> and, and I know my, my second child was... Uh, he was the one that I I would have liked to have given him even stronger medication because he just wasn't. <laughs> but yeah, it you know, even even though it was a, a difficult period, they all got through it. I I think as a parent it's important to to rely on the support that you have. And you know, as as you mentioned, yes, there there are certain certain things and rules that you might break to so if if it works better if it's you everyone's sleeping in the same bed and that means that that everyone gets the, a good night's sleep yes you you know you you can adjust or break the rules during that short time to to ensure that that the the family survives but yeah i think as a in in terms of teething we do get the parents get through it. The babies get through it. My my youngest recently was complaining about wisdom tooth pain. 
But so even when they're older, <laughs> the teething can still cause problems. But uh -huh. yeah, we all get through it. My takeaway from the conversation then, Doctor, is that teething, like you said, is a natural process. And all parents can do during this process is obviously help alleviate some of those symptoms. Yeah, to keep them as comfortable as possible during the process. Are there any common worries or, or concerns that you've noticed with parents regarding the teething phase? So, well, once the teeth have come, have come through, a question about when do you start brushing the teeth? So that, you know, yes, when the teeth are there, especially when the babies are still small because they're having milk feed. And, and a lot of parents will, if there are any marks or there's tooth decay, the, their first reaction will be to, to blame antibiotics. Must have been because my child had antibiotics and that's why the teeth are, are looking like they are. But what's more important for parents to realize is if they're not brushing the teeth or if the babies are having, uh, if they're brushing the teeth at night before a milk bottle or if they're waking up at night for a few milk bottles, that it's that milk that's in contact with the teeth all night that are going to cause the, the issues. So, and it's something that you're not, you know, you don't, you're not going to think about it. Until someone mentions it to you, you know, a lot of parents will come and say, oh, no, but we, I brush the teeth in the bath and then the baby has the bottle after a bath. So, no, just think about it, you know, but rather when you, yes, the baby can have some, some milk before bed, but then you need to remember to brush the teeth before they, before they go to sleep so that you don't have that. The, the milk in contact with the teeth for the whole night. Then also just reminding parents that there are a certain group of antibiotics, the tetracyclines that you would steer away from um, that can affect bone growth and teeth development. Yes, so, but I mean, certainly as, as a pediatrician, those, those antibiotics we would not use in the, yeah. the young, you know, in, in the young baby. So that's why, you know, the antibiotics that we do use in younger children um, are not really, are not the culprits for affecting tooth uh, development. Dr. Baxter, coming to the end of our conversation today, what are your final thoughts or advice you'd like to give to our listeners regarding teething? So, yes, it can be a tricky, it can be a, a sleepless process. Try as much as you can not to disrupt the, the normal routine because it, it does then become difficult to get back into your normal routine. But at the same time, if there are ways that you can make your baby and yourself more comfortable and um, to get through the short teething process, yes, it might be short now and then there's another a tooth coming in a month's time. But, but you know, there, there are... There are ways to, to minimize the discomfort and yeah, I think really not to, so don't stress about the teething, but if there are more serious symptoms, high fever, if the baby is not sleeping at all, not eating at all, then to just seek medical advice to make sure that there isn't anything else that's, that needs to be treated. Wonderful advice. And that wraps up today's episode with Dr. Alison Baxter. Um, regarding our subject teething and when to blame teething. This podcast is powered by Globe Made UK, giving you access to the best doctors, treatments and medical professionals worldwide.